Good day everyone. Welcome to our new lesson, Understanding Normal Distribution. So in this lesson, we'll have the basic concept regarding normal distribution and how this distribution is being represented by a normal curve or what we call as a bell-shaped curve. Okay, so to begin with, so let's have first the definition of a normal distribution. So the normal distribution is a probability function that describes how the values of a variable are distributed. So basically, pagka sinabi nating normal distribution, so the values of the variable is distributed equally. Okay, so assuming we have here our normal distribution curve, so the peak of the curve uh, represents the mean of the distribution. So half of the distribution or 50% of the distribution is higher than the mean, while the other 50% is lower than the mean. So, kaya tinawag na normal distribution kasi yung kalahati, mas mataas dun sa ating mean value, and then yung kalahati naman, mas mababa sa ating mean value. So, again, another description for a normal distribution. So, another description for a normal distribution, it is a symmetric distribution where most of the observations cluster around the central peak. So, majority of the observation, majority of the probability is uh, equal to the mean. So, mas marami yung mean value natin kumpara dun sa distribution higher and distribution lower than the mean. Then, for values further away from the mean, taper off equally on both directions. So, sabi natin, yung mga distributions or the probabilities that are higher and lower than the mean are distributed equally uh, to the left and the right, to the left side and right side of our normal curve. So, to go on, again, normal distribution is a symmetrical distribution. So, pagka sinabing symmetrical, equal yung distribution natin. And that is represented by a bell-shaped curve. And the bell-shaped curve is also known as the normal curve. So, ang representation na ginagamit natin is a normal curve. So, example here. So, we have the height of students in a class. So, for example, yung probability of the height of the students in the class. So, majority of the students in the class has an average height. So, syempre, yung karamihan doon, Nasa average height lang. Hindi siya matangkad. Or hindi matangkad na matangkad, hindi maliit na maliit. So, karamihan sila are measured sa gitna. And that is represented by a measure of central tendency, which is the mean. Pwede rin naman natin siyang represent as the mode or the median. Pero commonly, mean yung ginagamit natin. Kaya nga tinawag na central tendency, di ba? Kung maalala natin, pag sinabing central tendency, that is the tendency of the score to cluster at the center. Diba yung kakayanan ng score natin or nung data natin, numerical value natin na maipon sa gitna. Okay, and then as we go on again, sabi natin kanina, yung kalahati ng distribution are shorter than the mean. So that is lower than the mean. So yung kalahati ng klase, mas mababa dun sa mean value. Halimbawa, ang mean value natin is 5.4. Yun ang average height ng ating sudyante. So yung kalahati, nung ating mga sudyante sa klase natin is less than 5.4. Then, yung kalahati is higher than 5 feet and 4 inches. Okay, so that is how normal distribution uh, represents the probability of the given variable. And then, syempre, meron tayong mga variation in our normal distribution. So, pwedeng mabago yung ating size, yung ating graph, depending on the given uh, standard deviation. So, in this given example, pare-pareho yung mean natin. So, look at the three graph. Yung ating green graph, blue, at saka yung ating maroon graph. So, lahat sila, ang ating mean ay yung nasa gitna. Pare-pareho lang yung mean nila. Okay, pero magkakaiba yung kanilang standard deviation. So, by the way, ang normal distribution natin is determined by the mean and the standard deviation. Kung babalikan natin yung mean, so mean is the expected value 
for that is the average probability of the given observations. Yung standard deviation naman is the deviation of each of the value from the mean. Yung layo ng bawat value natin from the mean. So, mas mataas ang deviation, mas malapad yung graph natin. Mas mababa ang deviation, mas makitid yung graph. Diba? So, kung titingnan natin dito, halimbawa yung ating green graph, yung ating green curve. So, ibig sabihin nito, mataas ang standard deviation nito. Kaya, each of the distribution, masyado silang malayo dun sa mean. Diba? Halimbawa, ganito. Yung average height natin is 5.4. Okay? Yung ibang sudyante, ang height lang nila ay 4.8, 4.9, or 5 foot flat. Okay? Pagpunta mo naman doon sa standard deviation number 1, sigma 1, sigma 1 to. This is a sigma 1. So, pwede natin consider, halimbawa, yung average height natin ay 5.4, and then yung iba... Pwedeng 5, 5, 5, 6. Yung iba naman, 5, 3, 5, So, magkakalapit lang yung mga height nila. Hindi sila naglalayo-layo. Unlike nung sa ating green curve kanina, di ba, 5, 4. Then, yung iba naman ay 4, 8. Medyo maliit. So, malayo ang deviation. Malayo yung diferensya ng mean sa ibang uh, height ng mga sudyante. Okay? So, dun sa ating maroon curve, balikan natin. 5-4, and then yung iba, 5-5, yung iba, 5-3. Pwedeng 5-3 and a half. So, therefore, magkakalapit. In this given graph, so ang pinapakita natin dito, meron tayong same mean but different standard deviation. So, magkakaiba yung standard deviation natin, kaya magkakaiba yung sukat ng graph natin. And then, so, as a description, sabi nga natin kanina, the higher the standard deviation, the broader the, broader the curve. So, mas mataas ang standard deviation, mas malapad yung curve natin. So, kamukha anong curve na pinakikita nung ating green curve here? Mas malapad siya kasi mataas ang standard deviation niya. ba diba? Kung lalagay mo sa scores yan, pwede mo sabihin na ang average score ni Lebron James ay 24 points per game. Kaya lang meron siyang laro na 10 points lang siya. Meron naman siyang laro na umabot ng 40 yung puntos niya. So, malayo yung standard deviation. Pag kinumbit ang standard deviation nun, malayo, mataas. So, meron namang pagkakataon, merong season si Lebron James na 24 points yung average, average points niya, pero yung ibang score niya are 26, 27, 23, 22, 24, 26, 28. So, hindi masyadong lumalayo dun sa 24 na average points. Kaya, yung curve natin ay narrower. So, the lower the standard deviation, the narrower. So, ibig sabihin yung mga scores, magkakadikit. Okay? So, magkakatabi. So, syempre, yung ating blue curve dito, pwede natin considered na uh, in-between. Di ba? In-between ng ating uh, high standard deviation sa low standard deviation. Pwede na sa in-between siya ng high and low standard deviation natin. Kaya yung curve natin, hindi masyadong mataas. Hindi masyadong mababa, hindi masyadong makitid, hindi masyadong malapad. So example, look at the different standard deviation here. So we have the standard deviation of 1. So ibig sabihin nun, lumalayo ng isang puntos yung bawat probability dun sa ating mean. Halimbawa, ang mean natin ay, uh, lagay natin 24. So lumalayo ng isang puntos. So pwedeng naging from 24, 25, 26, 27, pababa naman, 23, 22, 21. Okay, yung standard deviation naman ng 0.5, so lumalayo ng 0.5. Approximate. ba? Diba? So, pwedeng 24 yung points niya, naging 24.5, uh, 25, 25.5, and so on. Doon naman sa ating standard deviation na pangatlo, lumalayo naman ng 0.2. Yeah, pwede yan sabihin na uh, from 24.0, naging 24.2, 24.4, and so on. So, masyadong maliit yung agwat niya. Iba kung ipapakita natin sa graph yan, so halimbawa, ito yung ating uh, graph. So, ito yung ating mean represented by mu. So, sa ating standard deviation na nauna sa baba, standard deviation of 1, so, ibig sabihin for every point, lumalayo siya ng isang buong puntos. 
So, 1, 2, or negative 1, babawas isa, or negative 2, bawas dalawa. Sa second standard division naman, lumalayo naman siya ng 0.5 lang. So, kalahati lang yung inilalayo niya. Kung ito yung first graph niya, ayun yung second, ito yung third, ito yung fourth, and ganun din sa kabila. Then, yung ating standard division na pangatlo, lumalayo naman ng 0.2. So, pwedeng nandito siya. 0.2. Then, another example for comparison of our normal distribution curve or normal curve or bell-shaped curve. So, we have here uh, three bell-shaped curve having different mean but the same standard deviation. So, kung papansinin, kung magkakamukha yung standard deviation, magkakapantay lang yung graph. Walang mataas, walang mababa, walang malapad, walang makitid. Kasi pare-pareho lang naman yung distance na nilalayo nila from the mean. Yun nga lang, magkakaiba yung center of the distribution. ba Magkakaiba. So, ito yung ating mean number 1, iba yung center of the distribution. Mean number 2, iba yung center niya. And mean number 3, iba yung center niya. So, that is the other variation of normal distribution. Okay, then proceed. We will have the our empirical rule. So in our empirical rule, our probability will be converted into zero as our mean. So yung mean natin will be represented by zero. Okay, so how to convert? We will have that on our next lesson. Kung paano natin siya i-convert. Okay, then empirical rule pertains to the statist uh, statistical rule which states that for a normal distribution, almost all observed data will fall within three standard divisions of the mean. It is also known as the three sigma rule. Bakit sigma? Kasi sigma yung ginagamit na symbol for standard deviation. So we have the 68, 95, and 99.7 rule. Yan mga tawag sa kanya. So balikan natin yung height of the students in a class. 5.4 yung average height na sinabi ko kanina. So siya yung mean natin. Okay? So yung 5.4 natin yung ating mean. So 68% of the class, standard to, computed na to ha. So, standard na yan. Hindi na mababago yung 68. So, 68% of the class, ang height nila is uh, one standard deviation away from the mean. Kaya, positive 1, negative 1. Bakit positive 1? Kasi one standard deviation higher than the mean and one standard deviation lower than the mean. Okay? Mababa ng isang standard deviation sa mean na 5,4 or mataas ng isang standard deviation from the mean. So, 68% sila. So, pagka biniyak natin yan, 34% of the data is one standard division. So, kung bibiyakin natin yan, so 34% of the data is one standard division higher than the mean. And another 34% of the data is one standard division lower than the mean. Okay, doon naman tayo kay 95%. So, 95% of the data is 2 standard deviation higher and lower than the mean. So, 95% naman siya. Diba? So, kung bibiyakin mo, yung 47.5% is higher than 5.4. Or, diba, kung sinabi natin kanina, ang ating average height ay 5.4. So, yung 47.5% mas matangkad sa 5.4. Yan yung kalahati ng 95. Yung another 47.5% nung sudyante sa isang klase, mas mababa sa 5.4, mas maliit sa 5.4. So, all in all, yung 95% ng sudyante natin ay deviated from 5.4 or lumayo ng height sa 5.4. Okay, and then... 97, 99.7%. So, 99.7%, yan naman yung 3 standard division higher and lower than the mean. So, 3 standard division higher and lower than the mean. So, approximately 49.9% of our data is higher than or taller than 5.4 yung height and another 49.9% of the students in the class is shorter than 
So, ganyan yung paggamit ng ating normal curve. So, dun lang muna. We will just continue uh, the discussion on our next video lesson. Thank you.